Today we're going to go over the assembly instructions for the extension Alphacade 3 quarter inch scale vertical arcade machine. It is recommended to watch this video completely before beginning your assembly process. Regardless if you've purchased the emulator version or the controller that supports JAMA, the assembly of the cabinet will be exactly the same. Let's begin. Included hardware. 24 60 millimeter black bolts. 30 silver cross dowels. 6 80 millimeter black bolts, four M4 monitor screws, and four washers and spacers, one Allen wrench, left and right side decals, and bezel decals, clear plexiglass monitor bezel, fully assembled controller. JAMA controller will appear to be slightly different. Now let's look at the included parts. Part number one, right side upright. Part number two, this part will require four cross dowels. Part number three, this part will require four cross dowels. Part number four, this part will require two cross dowels. Part number five, this part will require four cross dowels. Part number six, this part will require two cross dowels. Part number seven, this part will require four cross dowels. Part number eight, this part will require two cross dowels. Part number nine, there will be two cross dowels. Part number 10, this part will require two cross dowels. Part number 11, left side upright. Part number 12, left side top upright. Part number 13, TV mount. Part number 14, top right upright. Part number 15, this will be the very top of the cabinet. And finally, the back. Additional tools required. One Phillips head screwdriver. Your first step is inserting the silver cross dowels into the cylinder pre-cut holes on these particular parts. Locate parts number 2, number 3, number 4, number 5, number 6, number 7, number 8, number 9, number 10, and number 15. Insert each cross dowel into each pre-cut cross dowel hole on the top of the board as shown. It is very important to make sure that the silver cross dowel slit is facing towards the pre-cut hole on the 3 quarter inch side. Make sure the slit is facing upwards or you will not be able to successfully connect your adjoining 60 millimeter bolt. Please be advised when installing the cross dowels into part number seven, you will need to note that the cross dowels will actually go into two different directions as shown. Again, make sure you have your cross dowels inserted into parts number two, number three, number four, number five, number six, number seven, number eight, number nine, number 10, and number 15. Preparing the monitor. Take your third party monitor and lie face down on a flat surface. Make sure that all HDMI cables and power cables are plugged in securely at this time. Locate the four nylon spacers and place them over the visa mount holes on the back of your monitor as shown. Carefully lay part 13 on top of the nylon spacers so you can successfully see the screw thread of the monitor through the holes. Now insert your four M4 screws and washers into the holes, proceeding to tighten, therefore securing your monitor to part number eight. The assembly process. Lay part number one flat on the ground with the engravings facing up. Now locate part number two and note in red where you will be inserting. Securely peg part number two into place as shown. Now locate part number three and note in red where you will be inserting. Proceed to peg part number three into place firmly as shown. Make sure the engravings are facing inward. Now locate part number four and note in red where you will be inserting. Proceed to peg part number four in place securely, then make sure you insert firmly into place with the engravings facing inward. Now locate part number five and note in red where you will be inserting. Proceed to peg part number five into place with the engravings facing inward. Now locate part number six and note in red where you will be inserting. Then make sure you insert firmly into place with the engravings facing inward. It is important to make sure all your cross dowels are inserted properly and the three pegs are facing towards the front of the cabinet. Locate part number seven and note in red where it will be inserted. Proceed to peg in securely, making sure the engravings are facing towards the back of the cabinet and the exposed green cross dowels are facing upwards as these will be the cross dowels that support the inserted controller. Now locate part number 8 and note in red where it will be inserted. 
Proceed to peg in securely, making sure the engravings are facing towards the back of the cabinet and the exposed green cross dowels are facing upwards as these will be the cross dowels that support the inserted controller. Locate part number 9 and note in red where you will be inserting. Proceed to peg in securely, making sure the engravings are facing towards the back of the cabinet and the cross dowel hole is towards the top of the cabinet. Locate part number 10 and note in red where you will be inserting. Proceed to peg part number 10 in place and make sure the engravings are facing towards the inside of the cabinet. Closing the cabinet. Carefully lay part number 11 on top of the assembled parts. Now proceed to line up all of the green pegs with their corresponded peg hole. It is best to start at the top side of the cabinet and with the palm of your hand, pound with a downward motion once the pegs are lined up properly to make sure that the part is secure. Once all pegs are into place and the part is secure, you can proceed to insert eight of the black 60 millimeter bolts into the provided holes on the top of part number 12. These 60 millimeter bolts will correspond to the cross dowels you previously installed and you can use the included Allen wrench to proceed to tighten all eight bolts. Do not use the three bolt holes towards the top of the cabinet at this time. Locate part number 12. Position part number 12 on top of the cabinet structure as shown and insert three of the 80 millimeter black bolts into place and proceed to tighten with the Allen wrench. Then you will want to carefully rotate the cabinet over to its opposite side and using another eight 60 millimeter bolts, you will want to insert those eight bolts and tighten as previously displayed in the last step. Again, do not insert any bolts into the three top holes at this particular time. Now locate part number 13 with your monitor attached and locate in red where you will be inserting. Line up part number 8 with monitor attached to what correspond previously in red and begin to feed your HDMI and power cables through the hole. Peg part number 13 into place with the TV attached and firmly press down on the top making sure the part is firmly secure. Now pull through any loose wires. It's important to make sure you don't pull too hard as you do not want to remove the HDMI or power connections from the TV. Locate part number 14. Similar to the steps on the opposite side, you'll want to lay part 14 on top of the assembled structure and using three of the 80 millimeter black bolts, insert into the cross dowels and proceed to tighten with the Allen wrench. Be sure that the pegs from the monitor mount properly insert into part 14. Now rotate your cabinet to its upright position, centering your screen. The visa mounts are horizontally adjustable. If you did not install your monitor center, you can easily adjust it by loosening the Phillips head visa mount screws and centering your monitor into position. Once you have your monitor symmetrical, you can retighten your visa mount screws with your Phillips head screwdriver to secure your TV or monitor into place. Now locate the back part. Proceed to slide in the back part in the provided grooves that are located behind the monitor. You will want to make sure that the black part is facing forward. Preparing the plexiglass bezel. Slightly peel back all four corners of one of the protective coatings of the bezel and then proceed to peel back a full inch from each side so you then can proceed to insert the plexiglass into the grooves. Then turn the plexiglass over and completely remove the protecting coating from the other side. Do not remove it from the original side. Installing the plexiglass bezel. It is important not to touch the unprotected side of the bezel at this time. So by using two hands, you will carefully insert the bezel into the provided grooves. Once the bezel is in the tracks, you can use your hands from the bottom to slowly maneuver the bezel down into place. Locate part number 15. Carefully lay part number 15 on top of the assembled parts and make sure the bezel falls into the groove securely. Then proceed to insert two 60 millimeter cross dowels on each side and proceed to tighten with your included Allen wrench. Installing the controller. Feed your cables through first, then drop in your controller using the four green pegs to line up the controller and firmly peg into place. Using four 60 millimeter bolts, insert into the four holes on top of the controller and proceed to tighten with your included Allen wrench. Additional details on the functionality of the controller you selected will be included in separate instructions. Peeling the plexiglass cover. Now simply peel back the remaining protective coating off of your plexiglass. Applying graphics. 
Begin by locating the side graphics and peeling them off. After you've peeled off your graphics with both hands, carefully line the graphics up and apply as shown. Again, it is helpful to use two hands to do this. You can then proceed to apply your graphics to the opposite side. Locate your bezel stickers. Peel your bezel sticker one at a time and proceed to apply them on the negative areas around your monitor. It is helpful to use two hands to do this. Connecting to your device. Now you can connect your HDMI cable and controller connection to your desired device and begin hours of enjoyment with great retro gameplay. Congratulations, you have successfully assembled your 3 quarter inch scale extension alpha arcade cabinet.